in like the whole like formal education thing, um, mm -hmm. whether it's like art, filmmaking, photography, and in my case, business, my opinion towards business is that you don't really need to go through the formal education system and in filmmaking as well. I think a lot of it is picked up through trial and error and just being in the industry, starting out by working for free and getting the experience where you need to. In the, in the field of industrial design, I, I feel uh, like my outside opinion is that um, formal education is very valuable, similar to architecture. Uh, what is what is your perspective on that? So I agree, you don't, you don't have to go to school to do it at all. Um, the one thing that I learned, uh, the one thing that I found most valuable about my, my education was that um, I went to Drexel in Philadelphia, that's actually how I ended up, I, I met my, doesn't matter. My friend goes there actually, <laughs> not for It's a great school, design. I love it. <laughs> but the but the reason I love that school so much is because they require you to have um, I forget what they call it but it's it's basically internships like six month internships yeah. and it counts towards your your educate or your um your actual like it gives you college credit or whatever uh, but it's required unlike some colleges which suggest it during the summer but they don't require it yeah um and and those internship experiences were some of the the most um, I think important experiences in my life, not only because I got jobs through meeting people on those internships, but it was really being able to apply what I've learned in college um, to the real world and realizing that yes, you know, there is stuff that you learn in college that is important in the real world, but there's so many other things like um, collaborating with, with people um, and, and just really um, creating things that, one thing I found that I think a lot of designers don't realize is that they create things that that they think look good and that they think everyone will like, but and sort of like we were just talking about, but people don't realize that there are so many other factors that go into it. Like yeah. one thing that I always thought was, I always was obsessed with Apple's design. So when I went into college, all my sketches, like for the first <laughs> year, looked like Apple products. Like That's they why looked, I like, wanted simple, to go to like, industrial design. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then you don't realize until you start working or start really looking into, you know, what goes into an Apple product. Those materials are insanely expensive. Apple has this insane manufacturing process that they're somehow how it, they are somehow able to do that most other companies can't. Um, it's it's cost of materials, yeah. it's cost of labor, it's working with factories. Some factories can't create things; they just literally can't because they don't have the uh, capabilities. And it's also. Um, you know, Apple takes a lot of risks. They do things that most people wouldn't. Um, and they, they set like, for example, those, those iMac wheels, like that's, that's crazy. $700 wheels. They look dope, but that's crazy. Um, like they take these insane risks that other companies would never take. And it's because they take those risks that they're, that they're doing so well. And I think, um, you know, people think that that's the, people think that Apple is kind of the gold standard and that yeah. everyone, that, that, the, that for some reason, no, not everyone is trying to be like Apple, but there's reasons that people aren't trying to be like Apple because they're one of the only few that can make that sort of, um, business model work. I feel like, because they're the only ones who really have built up this luxury brand and it took them years to do. But like, you know, if you work for Logitech, which is a great brand, they create, you know, consumer products that most people can buy. Yeah. So when you work for Logitech, you have to create something that's made of plastic. It has to cost a certain amount. You have to remove features because, you know, they're too expensive. You have to use like a cheaper, I don't know, like webcam lens or whatever it is you put in there just because it's, it's cheaper and they can't afford to put in like, you know, a crazy thing. Like so the I think one on that ours? <laughs> <laughs> the, um, we actually, yeah. I actually visited uh, Logitech's headquarter last year in, um, mm -hmm. in That's Geneva. Awesome. Uh, where was it? It might have been Geneva. Yeah, it was Geneva Lake in midsummer, and it was for the MX Master 3 mouse. And uh, even oh, though it awesome. was like an iterative uh, model from the 2, and the 2 is already a great mouse. It's every tech YouTuber seems to have the MX Master line for video editing because the horizontal scrolling. It was crazy to see the table laid out with all of the plastic, the clay, and the prototypes that went into a incremental upgrade. And they also had like a basement where they spent like, like the Swiss are really good at designs, like the, whether yeah. it's the timepieces and everything. Um, and even visiting Dyson, the commonalities we notice is that there's always somebody in each department that is so specifically focused on one area. With Logitech, it Definitely. was the scrolling mouse. Uh, there was one guy who had been in the basement which doesn't have any windows and it's like 30 degrees Celsius uh, Fahrenheit. That would be like 90 or hundred or something like that. But um, he would just, he was there for a year and a half to work on the new scroll wheel, uh, the metal scrolling mechanism. And there was also another room where they had hundreds, if not thousands of keyboards and mouses clicking at the exact same time to test how many times you can press it before it breaks. And you're just standing in that room. There's no air conditioning out there. And there's this lady who's, who's like full-time job is, it's just in that room and you hear millions or thousands of clicks per second testing that. And I think seeing the behind the scenes process of that and the drawings that they went through, even for just like what you would call a minor uh, improvement, 
was uh, was very cool. And I think what Apple has done mm. very well is in design, you hear the phrase being thrown around, which is simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. A lot of times people feel like they have to, to do more in the design, like, oh, it's too simple, it's too boring, it's too similar. And what Apple has done well is is like essentially make it so that you look at the design, you appreciate it for what it is, but it isn't anything complicated. And eventually mm -hmm. it does grow on people. Like remember when AirPods came out, everybody was yeah. getting hate for AirPods and now every knockoff yeah. company is trying to make them look exactly yeah. like yeah. AirPods. It's like a household thing now. You're used to seeing it. And once you're used to seeing it, you're like, wow, like what Apple had been able to do in making a four gram earbud that is fully wireless and that no competitor has been able to catch up to in the th two or three years that it's been out is mm -hmm. is crazy. And um, bold decisions are what they're known for, like the Mac Pro, the XDR, the stand, which looks it's great in my opinion. I know a lot of people were hating on it. Yeah.